Erev Tov, Chavarim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and uh, we are back again with uh, Yitzhak Shapira in another video that's going on that's circulating on uh, uh, Rabbi Shapira's channel. And this time, he is really on a rant against the ministers in India. Uh, because right now he's in India, and of course uh, they put out some type of flyer uh, coming against him for trying to spread uh, the messianic beliefs inside of India. And of course when I say messianic beliefs, the, 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 the trouble that they're having is, is that when it comes to the identity of the Messiah Jesus, that you can't have Jesus... You can't have the Messiah unless you embrace uh, Talmudic Judaism. And I know that there are many believers uh, in Yeshua. When I say believers in Yeshua, I'm talking about Jewish people that believe that Jesus Christ truly is the Messiah that will not embrace Talmudic Judaism whatsoever. And But this is where Shapira is going with this, putting those people under there, or at least putting them under Messianic rabbis who also are firm believers that you must be under Talmudic Judaism. Now, I see that uh, Yitzhak Shapira has been very careful in his wording now after we did the rebuttal with him on Zechariah chapter uh, 8 and I'm going to be speaking a little bit about this tonight, and the video that he did is an hour and 27 minutes long, uh, so I haven't had a chance, and Yana as well, working on this even while I'm speaking to you now. She's over there working uh, from her aspect, her point of view, but I've got about 30 minutes of the video with the objections that I have on what he's saying that I wanted to share with you. Uh, before I go into that, though, let me just share with you guys also, I did get a chance uh, to speak with Adam Fink. Adam Fink did this uh, video here called Antichrist Spirit Revealed Documentary 2019. Uh, it was a very nice conversation. I'd reached out to Adam. I'd mentioned to you guys I was trying to reach out to him. He did get back with me. Uh, he, we tried to set up several times to speak. Hadn't been able to, to speak as of yet. His time a little bit easier for him, but just running into issues for me trying to get up with him. But I just took and did a random call today and we were able to speak together about the video and of course I've had a lot of you write me that uh, Adam had done an addendum that I should watch um, and I was unaware of that when I did the video that I did but him trying to clarify his stance on on the issue when it comes to uh, the name of Jesus itself being the mark of the beast. Um, now. I know Adam is talking about maybe doing another video. I know he's also talking about, uh, uh, he did text me, he's thinking about putting his addendum attached with this video. Uh, and he said to me that he really realized, especially after looking at the comments, that he was majorly misunderstood in his point of view. Uh, so I kind of take it that Adam's uh, point of view is not exactly the same as the guy that's on the first part of the video. And that, uh, but, but he also is concerned and I can understand his point here, that there is two types of messiahs being preached today. Well, there's probably a lot more than just two. Uh, you know, his, his point is, is that he feels like that there is a lawless messiah being preached and that most people that follow, uh, as far as in the uh, belief of using the name of Jesus, feel like he feels like more that that is a lawless Jesus. And I don't want to say too much because I don't want to put words into Adam's mouth. It wouldn't be right of me to do that. But I will say that we did have an open, open heart-to-heart -heart discussion about uh, this issue here, and I appreciated his honesty with me, and I appreciate that he is trying to uh, minimize the damage that's been done uh, for those that have listened that took that the wrong way. So, uh, I, again, I just want to let you guys know that. I will listen to the addendum that he has done. Uh, hopefully, I'll get to do it this week sometime. I'd like to see how he responded uh, on his part two, uh, compared to what was actually in this uh, this video here, and and of course I know that the gentleman that he includes that excerpt in there, I don't think there's any change on his side of it as far as the name of Jesus being the mark of the beast, which is something I am completely 100% against. But again, I just wanted you guys to be aware we did speak. 
uh, I, I reached out to him and he did take my call and I think it was uh, I think it was a good phone call you know uh, so anyway uh, blessings to him and his family uh, as well anyway let's get right back here to uh, uh, Rabbi Yitzhak Shapira and and he likes to likes to be acknowledged as a rabbi. I can tell that from listening to uh, Yitzhak Shapira. Uh, I have put together, I started doing this in a PowerPoint because I felt like that we really need to do that. And I'm gonna play from uh, for you from 14 minute mark, 13 seconds to 1720 roughly about there where he speaks about Zechariah chapter eight. So let's get started into the video here um, and listen to what he has to say. Slide number one. And I read with you together. Well, let me first get the volume up, make sure I know where I'm stopping at, 1720. Um, it's got a lot of crackling in the video there. I know he's in India, so uh, I assume maybe it's just poor uh, audio where he's at. So uh, just please bear with that part there. Uh, we see now let me clarify this too he's going to read to you this what you're seeing on the screen now this was a warning that was put out in india about him and his organization being there uh, in india setting up the messianic congregations and they put a quote in here so when you hear him reading this he doesn't read it actually word for word pretty close to word for word but a few things are not exactly word to word uh, but they say in here, they're quoting him as saying, if you really want to do things properly, you will grab the tzitzit or the tassel of the garment of a Jew and you will walk with the Jew and tell yourself to humble yourself and you tell to the Jew, teach me. Uh, and of course, he's going to be talking about this issue right here. And this is why we're going to get into Zechariah. But I want you to hear him as he reads it. And then as he expounds on this once again, listen to this the emergence of a false doctrine with occultic leanings in India, false teaching action. If you really want to do things properly, quoting me, you will have to grab the tzitzit, the tassel of a garment of a Jew, and you will walk with the Jew and tell yourself to humble yourself and you tell to the Jew, teach me. So then you can teach the gospel that come out of the Jew. Salvation is of the Jews. You will teach this in India. Otherwise, you ended up with a gospel. But it is an incomplete gospel. It is a gospel without a context. The author... The authors claim to have a problem with the fact that I say that the Gentile have to hold the grab to tzitzit of the Jew. Well, friends, if you have a problem with this, I encourage you to take today your Bible and rip from your Bible the book of Zechariah. I am simply quoting from the book of Zechariah, chapter 8, verse 23, where the prophet clearly said, and let's read this together. I will read it in English, in Hebrew for you, but we can look at it in English. It says, so says the Lord of armies. In those days, there will be 10 men from the nations who will hold the garment of a Jewish man to say, we heard that God is with you. We want to follow you because we heard that God is with you. This is a fulfillment of what later on Paul referred to as the fullness of the Gentiles. There will be a season, and it says, Behold, the days are coming. It's going to be right before Mashiach's appearance that the nation we want to hold the garment of the Jew. What does the garment represent? The garment represents the covenant of Israel. The Gentile would want to come and would want to learn the covenant of Israel. But according to you, the Gentile have everything already. So let me ask you a question. If the Gentile have everything already, why would he want to come to, to grab the Jew? 
Why would he want them to be near to the Jew if he's already complete, if he's already full? It is because in reality, the Gentile is missing something. He is missing the context of the gospel. Why? Because Yeshua says that the salvation is of the Jews. Okay, now, it's going to get worse here in a moment. And I'm sure most people that would listen to this, if you don't understand spiritually, or if you don't understand the Hebrew language in which uh, Shapira is reading this from, uh, you might come to that same conclusion. In fact, myself, I used to think as well that Zechariah chapter 8, verse 23 here, was a future fulfillment. Uh, it wasn't until recently that I really got a, 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 <laughs> the revelation that I was totally wrong, and, and that actually came from um, a sister that shared this with me that allowed me to be able to get a better understanding myself. And all it was was she told my wife, the sister Jennifer, she told my wife, she said, you need to have Steve go back and read it again. It's the, it's the, it's the seat of a Jewish man. It's singular. And I'm like, okay, so I went back and I reread this, and of course, that's exactly right. But there's a lot more. I mean, I'm starting to see uh, uh, Yitzhak Shapira to type a lot of things, and really, in some cases, it's majorly gross error in what he's going into. Now, I don't say that he's going into gross error in some of the types he's trying to say here. He's trying to say that the garment is a Jewish garment. Well, if it was on Jesus, he did come as a Jewish man in those days there, uh, you know, so yes, I guess it'd be a Jewish garment. And he's even going so far as to say now, I've heard him in one place, he implies this, uh, Jesus being that it was a seed of him, but he still holds on to that plural aspect, totally ignoring the fact that scripture has already been fulfilled. But, Let's take a look at this once again. We'll start in chapter 22. Yea, many peoples and mighty nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to entreat the favor of the Lord. Okay, and they did. Acts chapter 2 is when all this took place. It says here, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all the languages of the nation, shall even take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew. Okay? That settles it right there. There's no plural to that. Now, he even read it out of his own Bible, a Jewish man, singular, but he goes on to say, saying, we will go with you, for we hear, we have heard that God is with you, and the U is plural. Yeah, the U is plural there, because on Pentecost, there was 120 in the upper room, and when they came out filled with the Holy Spirit, they were the ones that had taken hold of the skirt of him, Jesus Christ, that is a Jew. All right? And so, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. The scripture was being fulfilled. And what was it? There were devout men, devout Judeans, actually the word is Judean in, in the Greek language there, uh, that were dwelling there at that time. They, in other words, they were there. They came into the country from all the different na known nations of that day. They were there. And when they heard the noise that was being made abroad, they wanted to know what's going on here. And then they wanted to know how can they receive? How can they also because they what they heard that God is with you. Because why, how did they know God was with them? Because the Holy Spirit had come upon them. What did Jesus say? I'll not leave you comfortless, but I will be with you even in you. Oh my goodness. I don't even have that scripture up. But let's look at it right here. All right. Asherah uh, Yachaziku, uh, as, um, excuse me. Asherah uh, Anashim Ten Men Mechol. Uh, you know, from uh, the nations there, all right? They're going to take a hold of the wing of that Jewish man, singular, right? 
Imcham, we will go with you. Now they're going not, they didn't just go with the Jewish man. So what happened to that Jewish man? They took a hold of the wing of a Jewish man, but the Jewish man is no longer there because they, they, are, they say to them, we hear that God is with you. But what happened to that single Jewish man? That's the big mystery here. The prophecy is they take a hold of the skirt of a Jewish man, but then they say, we hear God is with you, plural, that's right, imchem, kishamanu elohim imchem, for we hear that God is with you. Just like it says that he would be called Emmanuel, God with us, right? Now let's just take, and for a moment here, let me, let me back, back out of this right here, and that was... Uh, what was it what I was saying just a second ago there that, uh, okay, I'll be with you even in you. I think that's the way that's worded there. And yes, right here in John, John 14, 17. Let me pull that up here for you. John 14, 17, the book of John chapter 14 and then verse 17 this is where he's talking about sending the holy spirit all right john 14 17 oh, there we get to it let's see we're still still stuck in acts here i don't know why but let's just see if we can make it work this time around all right, it's acting kind of silly on me here. Let me take and we'll just re-upload. Hmm. Maybe. We're gonna go wireless. Maybe that'll make it work a little bit better there. For some reason, our wired connection was not working very well. So John 14. And verse 17, let's go to that now. Here we go. I'll back up to verse 16, and let me blow this up because I had it shrunk down for a different reason. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you I leave I, I will not leave you comfortless I will come to you that's a personal pronoun I don't know how you get around that I will come to you that a little while the world seeth me no more but you see me because I live you shall live also and that day you shall know that I am in my father and you in me and I in you so they had taken a hold of the wing of his garment. Now I've shared that with you a little while back. We already know about that up in, up in the side of Syria is where he actually says that. They took a hold of the wing of his garment. And uh, that's in the Hebrew, Matthew. And now he's talking about being with them, even in them. All right. So when they actually came to, to Yeshua and they said, we hear that God is with you, uh, in Zechariah right here, we hear that, you know, that uh, where it says here, take a hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, or a Jewish man, Ishuhudi, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Yeah, he wasn't only just with them, he was in them. Now, some might argue, wait a minute, the Jewish man can't be God. Well, Isaiah 9, 6, right? Let's just take a, let's just jump over there. And uh, I'm going to challenge you just a little bit on some of these things here, right? Isaiah, we know the prophecy of Isaiah, right? This here is this prophecy of the Messiah, right? The government be, in, be increased and of peace there be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to establish it and uphold it through justice and through righteousness for from hence more evermore. Wait a minute, is, wait a minute that's wrong here. Sorry, verse 5. For a child is born, okay, a son is given unto us, and the government is upon his shoulder, and his name is called, now they just put it in there, and they just transliterate the Hebrew there, uh, Piel Yoetz El Gibor, 
right? El Gibor. What is El Gibor? Right there. It's the mighty God. Oh, wait a minute. He's also called Aviad Shalom. My father is peace. You know, what's interesting, not only does Isaiah say that he would be God, if you went to the Dead Sea Scrolls, there is, I read to you recently um, from the writings of Levi, there's also the writings of Naphtali. Now there is a pseudograph called the, uh, the Testament of the Patriarchs, but neither the Christians nor the Jews accept that writing. Um, and I can understand why, because they didn't have any document to back it up. But when the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered, oddly enough, the Testament of Levi and the Testament of Naphtali, which were nearly identical to what was discovered, or, or excuse me, what was discovered was nearly identical to that of those two books that are written in what they call the Testament of the Patriarchs. All right, this is the 12 sons of Jacob. Well, Naphtali clearly defines that God would dwell among men in a human form. Isn't that interesting? Just like Isaiah said he would be called El Gibor. He also said that he would die, that he would come to die for the sake of Israel and the righteous of the Gentiles. I'll have to share that with you guys sometimes. But anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in there. Let's move on and uh, drop out Adam's video here. And let's see where we're going to next. Let me look at the PowerPoint. We'll go to the next slide here. Romans chapter 9. Yes, actually we're going to pick right up at verse 18. And I'm going to play it to 1930, just a minute and a half there, so we can listen to that part as well. We have Christ. We are full in Christ. Oh, is that so? In Colossians chapter 2, Paul says that one who is full with Christ will walk according to the way of Christ. Let me ask you a question. Slandering and lying about a Jewish believer in Yeshua is walking like Christ? Do you walk like Christ? I think we know the answer for this. You are nothing like Christ. Nothing about the way you speak, sound, smell, and feel like Yeshua. In reality, the text says here, we have heard that God is with you. And here is your false assumption. You think that God is with you, walking with you, that he says, let us walk with you, speaking about Jesus. We have our God with you. We hold on to the, to the teachings of Jesus. But friends, it cannot be Jesus, because in Hebrew, the word you here specifically is the word imchem that speak about plural it is the gentiles who are grafted themselves out i'm going to play the next 15 seconds but if you'll notice he says it cannot be jesus because the hebrew word there is imchem we hear that god is with you that's true that's the plural but the ishuhudi Yitzhak Shapira, you know good and well, that's singular. You know good and well that represents Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. But you know, if you tell a lie long enough, the people will believe it, won't they? Is that the purpose? Keep lying long enough until the Gentiles will actually believe your lies. And in reality, you're not fully lying, you're only partially lying. Because the imchem is plural, and that is with you, and that is fulfilled already, but you don't want to tell them that part. Let's finish the last 15 seconds. So I had to make that point while he was saying it. To the Jewish people, 
not to a single Jew, but to corporate of Jewish people. Who they are? They are the Messianic believers, the followers of Messiah. Let's continue. And All right. So he said it's to the corporate Jews, the Messianic Jews. Well, maybe we could say it was to the Messianic Jews, and that might be true, but not the Messianic community of today that's trying to lead the believer, the Christian, back into Talmudic Judaism. And I can only say, Rabbi Shapira, that you would seriously take and consider the things that I'm saying here, because my desire is not to just constantly have to make videos to correct these things but the damage that you do to the believers and the people that you are pulling away from Christ and putting them underneath Talmudic rabbis or even Messianic rabbis that are completely uh, taking people into error this is a major epidemic and I'm just sad to see all this happening let's take a look at let's take a look at here and we'll put it back up on the screen large for you guys again so you'll be able to see it a little bit better and uh, let's go to the next part here Romans chapter 9 was kind of what I wanted to use to speak about that because uh, Shapiro is making it look like that as you know believers you guys you know you got to have the Jew and it's got to be a corporate Jew uh, no less. So I want to deal with that and then I'm going to show you also in Acts where it's already been fulfilled. We've done it before, we'll do it again. All right, Romans chapter 9, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brother and my kinsmen according to the flesh. All right, now verse 4 is very important because it's in italicized a couple of things in here that are not actually in the original Greek. So they put it in there. These two parts here in green and not the rest of this, just up here in verse 4 what you see in green is not part of the text. So listen to this, and we're going to read it as if those two, those three words are not actually there because they're not in Greek. Let's read it. Who are Israelites? To whom the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service and the promises. Whose are the fathers? Hmm. Of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all God blessed forever. Amen. Now they added the word pertaineth and service of God because the word service in Greek is more like worship, worship of God. All right, so we'd read it as the way they have it writ written now. Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises? Whose are the fathers and of whom are, uh, as concerning the flesh Christ came who is over all God blessed forever. Amen. Now I read verse 4 and 5 together because to me and what I can see in this, if you take out the word pertaineth which was not there and we look at this here, who are Israelites to whom the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and service of God and the promises, whose are the fathers? And whom of concerning as the flesh Christ came, who is over all God blessed forever. Amen. In other words, Christ came for the fathers. He came to the Jews, but the Jews received him not. Or he, the scripture said he came to his own, and his own received him not. But he came because of the sake of the fathers. All right. This is why he actually came. So I'm wondering if the per word pertaineth were not taken out there. Is he more referring to the fathers than he is for the rest of this? Notice what it says though. Not as though the word of God hath taken of non effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. This is why I actually mention this as well, because now Paul says, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Oh, wow. Interesting. Well, just because you're a Jew, that's special status? Well, not according to Paul. And definitely not according to Yeshua, because Yeshua clearly called the Pharisees a bunch of vipers, serpents, generation of vipers, no less, and said, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Well, Yitzhak Shapira, that happens to be most of what we would call Orthodox Jews back then. As he goes on to say, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. 
That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Hmm. So just because you are descendant from Abraham or Isaac or Jacob doesn't make you a child of God. And as he says in verse 6, not as th though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. All right. Now, let's then let's go back. Let's take a look here. I said also to you that the book of Acts, okay, the fulfillment of what he's reading here was fulfilled in the book of Acts in chapter 2. All right. And we find out when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of a fire set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Didn't Jesus say I won't leave you comfortless. And he goes on to say, I'll be with you even in you. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of what? Every nation under heaven. There's your ten men of the nations. You have to remember the scripture says, though Israel be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant would return. Only a remnant. See, it's funny because Yixach Shapira loves to quote Paul in Romans 11 saying, all Israel shall be saved. You know, long before Shapira ever even said these things, I have taught this for years. All Israel shall be saved has nothing to do with the entire Jewish population of the earth. If it did, then what I just read to you out of Romans 9 would be totally false. Because he said, not all that are, uh, uh, that are of Israel are Israel. Just because you're a flesh seed of Abraham doesn't make you a true child of God. And this, is, this whole thing in Romans 11, he said that, you know, like Paul gives that example. He said when Elijah cried out and said, Lord, I'm the only one left. The Lord says, no, I've got 9,000 that haven't bowed the knee to Baal. So there was a remnant of 9,000 in, and then Paul comes right on down. He said, even unto this day, there's still a remnant that believe. Well, here's your remnant in Acts. Because all Israel didn't believe 2,000 years ago, Yitzhak Shapira, where are they today? Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because they, every man heard speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these speak Galileans? How hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Okay, so they might be Judeans because their families were descendants of the region of Judah, but they weren't born in Israel. They were born in Perithians, Medes, Elamites, and dwellers of Mesopotamia, and Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, uh, and it goes on down the list, including Egypt, Libya, Serene, Rome, Jews, and proselytes. So it's both Jew and Gentiles were there. Cretes and Arabians were there. They're not even Jews. So we had Gentiles. We had people from all over the world had come to Jerusalem. Ten people of the nations. See, wanting to take a hold of the skirt of a Jewish man. Not collective Israel. But there were on the day of Pentecost 120 in the upper room. Let's move down. Because we got all these, what I call 10 of the nations, and that's a conjecture. But as you move down, we find out that it says here, uh, he says, therefore, let all the house, this is Peter speaking, know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. 
Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of what? The Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they gladly received his word, were baptized the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. What did he say over in Zechariah's prophecy? It touches, says, we have heard God is with you. See? We will go with you, for we have heard God is with you. And how did they go with them? They went in baptism. There's only 3,000 though. So see, this was fulfilled 2,000 years ago. And yet, everybody's trying to apply it to some future generation of a bunch of messianic believers. Listen, those believers then, those messianic 120 that were in the upper room were not trying to take anybody back into a Talmudic Judaism. They weren't running around saying the Talmud is not bad, not evil, it's our treasure. No, they never said that. They weren't uh, defending Kabbalah or saying that the Messiah, uh, that Yeshua was Metatron. They weren't going around saying to the people back then that, uh, that you know, uh, the Messiah is equal to value, Gematria, to the serpent, and that the Messiah is going to uh, this Messiah, as you put it, Yitzhak Shapir, in another video that I just listened to recently, that the Messiah was like the serpent. He shed his skin in order to reveal himself. Are, are you, I mean, are you nuts? And Christians are supposed to, I mean, you, what are you guys doing? You, you, you wallop this down like, like garbage or something, like you're going to McDonald's or something. You ever, you ever take, yeah, speaking of McDonald's, you ever take and buy McDonald's? Hamburger, french fries, put it in your car, and a little while later walk back to your car after it's been a hot day and smell that. I mean, oh my, or just leave the french fries out in your house for a little bit. The stench that comes from it. And that's supposed to be just a potato. And yet we put it in our bodies. I don't want them. I'd rather have, you, you can make real french fries out of a potato. It tastes a heck of a lot better. And, and it won't stink so badly afterwards. You ever wonder why? I mean, and we just, but that's what happens with, with the gospel. I mean, people, ministers will come out and they'll preach any kind of garbage and people just gobble it all down. But if you would let that sit for a little bit and wait and smell it to see what it smells like, you might find out it's pretty rotten. Mm. That's why God said, test the spirit. Don't just, don't just suck everything down. There's no telling what you're going to get yourself into. All right, let's move on now. Um, Let's go to minute 1938 there, and we're going to come back to Romans 15 and also 1 John chapter 2 in response to these. And there's so many that could be done. I mean, I'm just, I was just skipping around to just do a, a couple of these here. Oh, I got to go back because I, okay, 1938 to 2050. Let's listen in. What, we're left off 1931. We'll just continue on. Read it one more time. So we see the extent of the deception. It says, if you do not grab, I said it, that if you do not grab the, the, to the to the seat of the Jew, you end up with a gospel, but it is incomplete gospel. I stand 100% behind this statement. The church does not have the full gospel today because they are missing the root of their faith. Without a root, Yeshua says, if one hear the good news of the kingdom, not of the message of salvation, but the message of the Let's just stop for a moment here. And I know we're going to go into this tomorrow too, so we may, may come back to it. I really need to, we, we've got to look at something here. He says that you don't have the root, okay? Let's just, let's just take for a moment here. And let's go to the word root just in the book of Matthew alone, right? All right. Um, hmm. 
I, I tell you what. Now I'm going to start. I'm going to I'm going to start with Malachi. Malachi four one. Uh, no, I'll come back to Malachi four one. Let me just, let me get Malachi open. Uh, and I know that that's a little different in Hebrew because they don't have but only third chapter. Oh, let me get it to the third chapter, not chapter one. Okay. We broke it up in, in English into a couple of chapters. Okay, it's going to be verse 19. I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. I'll highlight it so we already have it highlighted here. All right, now let's go back and let me just see here. Ah. Let's see, maybe I need to do the word Acts because I'm thinking about John and I don't know if I'm spelling it right. So let's just see. And uh, where John speaks about the uh, Ma uh, Matthew 3.10. All right, now, this just kind of gets me because he talks about you got to have the root. You know, you got to go back. Basically, you got to go back to Judaism. That's that's what he's saying. You got to go back. And I just want you to take a look at what John says. Right. I mean, let me find the verse three. Matthew three ten. OK, so we go back. Here we go. And John says here and think not. We'll go verse. Uh, Starting in verse 9, okay? So he says here, And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children to Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. So you're telling Yitzhak Shapiro, you're telling the people to go back to the root. They don't have, or they don't have the root. And your interpretation of the root is Judaism. Talmudic Judaism is the root. Well, John said that those trees are going to be cut down. Even if they claim themselves to be followers uh, of Abraham, they will be cut down if they don't bring forth fruit. And they don't bring forth fruit. In fact, let's take a look at what Jesus said uh, about this as well. Because I think he really makes this very clear in Matthew. All right. In a couple of places here, uh, we could take Matthew 23, 33 for just an example. And, uh, and then that way there, you know, because you're trying to say they got to go back to the root. Let's take a look at what the root of Pharisee Judaism really is. All right. So Matthew 23. And uh, to be sure we get the right verse here, verse 33. All right. So let's just take it right down to verse 33. Oop. Matthew 23. Doesn't want to go there. Maybe it did that time. Yep, there we go. All right. Fill you up the measure of your fathers. Now, let's see. We're going to see who he's talking to here. If we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. He's talking to the Pharisees. Wherefore, you be witnesses unto yourselves that you are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill you up the measure of your fathers. You serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify. Some of them shall you scourge in your synagogues and pers persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel into the blood of Zacharias, son of Barcaeus, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. Is that the route you want them to follow, Shapiro? Verily I say to you, all these things shall come upon this generation. And you actually quoted this one here. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often I would have gathered thee as the children together, even as a hen gather her chicks under her wings, and you would not. What did he say though? Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. There's 
if you're saying that Israel is the root and that they should be in that root there and Jesus just said that their house is left desolate and you want the Christians to be underneath a desolate tree even like the fig tree when he cursed the fig tree and said Bree, you'll bring forth no more fruit henceforth and you know that Israel is a fig tree and she has been withered and unable to produce fruit now there is a root that you should be grafted into even as Paul says in Romans 11 when he talks about those branches being cut out of the uh, olive tree uh, uh, the natural branches because of unbelief so if we look at Romans 15 it says and again and let me I'll have to do it again like this so we can see the see it bigger because I know it doesn't uh, um, can't see it as well unless it's large enough on the screen and again praise the Lord all you Gentiles Roman chapter 15 verse 12, 11 and laud him all you people and again Isaiah saith, there shall be a root of Jesse the Messiah is the root not Israel as a collective body but Jesus Christ the Messiah is the root the root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, and him shall the Gentiles trust. The Gentiles are not trusting in the root of Talmudic Judaism, but rather they are trusting in the root of Jesse, which is Yeshua HaMashiach. And you want them to go into some garbage like that? Notice what it says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may be abound in hope through the power of the Holy Holy Ghost what did the Jews that did believe upon him those that had gathered back to the nations those that fulfilled Zacharias prophecy in fact the part where you said plural with you plural okay that was those from the nations in Acts chapter 2 when they came there in the hundred and what 20 were in the upper room and they came out filled with the Holy Spirit that's the ones that God was with them and what did they have that the others didn't the Holy Ghost the Holy Spirit same thing the Gentiles get and I myself also am persuaded of you my brethren that you also are full of goodness filled with knowledge able also to admonish one another what the Gentiles don't need the Jews Paul says right here in chapter 15, you're filled with knowledge and able to admonish one another. You don't have to have Jews over you telling you what to do. Because why? They got the root of Jesse. They got Christ the Messiah. Oh my goodness, friends. And then 1 John chapter 2, these things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Yeah, well, you know, shoe fits, wear it. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you, and you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Yeah. Get in the root. You're right about the root, Shapira, as far as we should be in the root or the vine as it's so eloquently spoken by Christ. But the vine is not, or neither is the root, the Gentile or the Christian, excuse me, the uh, Jewish nation. It's not Messianic Jews and it's not Talmudic Jews. We are branches. That is true. And the Gentile brothers have been grafted into the same vine and Christ Jesus is that vine. Which is interesting because Israel, the tribes of Israel were, were part of the natural olive tree and the scripture shows that Jesus was the vine when they were yet grafted then. They were partaking from his life before he even came on the earth. You ever notice that one? I bet you all didn't. Most people don't get those things. All right, let's go to the next one here. Um, we're going to have to go to minute 2210 to 2350. 2210 to 2350. 50. Let's listen into this.
the church. Let me continue for a moment. We read the rest of it and then we'll talk about this. Modern Christianity is misunderstanding Paul writing. If you are going to establish a messianic group and you are not going to be under a rabbi and go to YouTube and do things your own way, you are going to be confused and confuse your people. It is better for you to remain a Christian and to, and to introduce messianic, the messianic faith to the community. I stand 100% behind both statements. Let's take it one at a time and let's make sure we get it. The very first thing that I say, and I stand behind that, is the fact of the matter is that the scripture says, read your Bible. In Isaiah chapter 63, God destroyed Edom. He destroyed the entity that is Christianity. Does it destroy Christians? No. There is a difference between destroying an entity, as we know it, the church, and destroying an individual. Those believers who choose to graft themselves to the house of Israel, those who believe, it says that all nations will gather against Jerusalem in those days, but there will be a remnant from the nation who will choose to join themselves to the house of Israel. Why would God destroy Christi Christianity if Christianity loved Christ? Okay. Let's take a look at this on that particular subject there. And uh, we'll go back to the PowerPoint here. And I may just have to read it like it is. It's not wanting to change screens for me this time. I'm looking at John chapter 15. Oh, no, it is actually up. Sorry about that. And... Well, let me just see. Okay, there we go. Maybe, maybe it'll work this time. There we go, there we go. All right, in John chapter 15, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. That's what I was talking about a moment ago. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Okay. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. Right? I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Hmm. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Now, think about what John wrote here. We know now clearly that Yeshua, Yeshua himself said he is that vine. He clearly shows the branches. As Paul saw the revelation, yes, Israel were the branches. But because of unbelief, they were taken out. And you want Shapira to put Christians underneath these Talmudic rabbis that have been cut out of the tree. You're saying that they're going to take a hold of the seat of a Jew and not the seat of Christ, but with the ones, which I would agree, the ones that, where he says God is with you, but you failed to realize that was the 120. That was 2,000 years ago. And we found out how you follow them, how you follow, how do you go, we hear that God is with you, we will go with you. How do you go with, how do you fulfill the, I will go with you. All right, let's back up to it. All right, how do you fulfill that, right? We will go with you for we have heard that God is with you. How do we, how do you fulfill that? Because the ones that took a hold of the Jewish, the skirt of the Jewish man, 
which is Christ Jesus, that was fulfilled by the apostles, by the 120 that were in the upper room. They all had taken a hold of his skirt. How did they get, how did they get God with them but by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit within them. That was Acts chapter 2. All right, don't have that one on my screen there, but so let me just back up here. Let's take it, take it down for a second. So how did they fulfill it? We actually have that right over there. See, and uh, Acts, they were baptized when they heard this. See, they, the ones that had received the Holy Spirit, they'd already been baptized. Right? But the ones that were there of the nations, the ten men of the nations that were there, that were gathered from all over the earth, which was the house of Israel, by the way, because he instructed his apostles to go only into the way of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So when they returned after the death, burial, and resurrection, when they had returned for the Pentecost feast, that's why they were there. They knew something was coming. And when they saw what happened on the day of Pentecost, they wanted to know what to do. Peter told them. They said, men and brethren, what shall we do? How do we go with you? And then when they got baptized, they were what? They received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And he said, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's how you go with them. That's how you go with the ones that have taken a hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew. Get filled with the Holy Spirit. Not go down there and say, oh, we got to find out a new doctrine from the Talmudic Jews or the Messianic Jews that are Talmudists to begin with. And then we'll probably get something finally. No, it doesn't work like that. All right. All right. So let's, let's close up. We got one more and I'll close it up for now. So let me go back um, to the PowerPoint. Genesis chapter 3. And this is going to be at 2359 to 2540. Five, all right. This one is troubles me more than any. You want to talk about butchering the word of God. Actually, before I go there, I'm, I told you I was going to do Malachi. Let me go to Malachi real quick. All right. And I put this one up here for you. It's actually chapter four, I think verse one, but it's in the Hebrew Bible, chapter three, verse 19. For behold, the day cometh, it burneth as a furnace, and, will, and all the proud, and all that work wickedness, shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall set them ablaze, saith the Lord of hosts, that shall leave them neither root nor branch. You know, I used to think years ago, that meant no arms and no legs. No. The root is their father, the devil. And their branch, the Pharisees of 2,000 years ago, now not all Pharisees, because we saw Paul came out, we saw Nicodemus came out, but the root was the devil, as Jesus said, you are your father, the devil, the serpent. And the branch were his children. Be careful what tree you're grafted into. If you graft in to a Messianic Jewish tree that is grafted into a Talmudic teaching, you are grafting in to the tree of the serpent, to the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And they might promise you eternal life or a thousand year millennium here on this earth, but at the end, you will die. Don't forget that statement. If you if you want to, hey, if, if this is what blesses you is to listen to things like that, then you go stand with him. You know, if you want to support the truth, you can support this ministry because we will tell you the truth. And you know our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, and our address appears at the bottom of the screen. We thank you for your support, but this is terrible. And we're still a lot more to say about this. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benin. You're watching Israeli News Live, Erev Tov.